And we are back with the fifth segment of the GSMC Basketball Podcast, presented by the GSMC Sports Network. And in this fifth segment, we're going to be doing a quick preseason recap. But before I do that, I actually have a question for those of you guys who are tuning into the show. If you were a GM and you had the option to draft any player in the history of basketball, who would you draft first? I think that's a very interesting question, and I literally just saw this while I was scrolling through my phone, and I thought it would be a very interesting question to ask. Who would you draft first if you were a GM and you had the option of picking any player in the history of basketball? Like, I think that's a very interesting question. So let me know in the comments what you guys think of that question, and let me know who you guys would take as um, your number one pick. Again, it can be any player from any era at any position. Who would be the first player that you pick? So while you guys are going on thinking about that, I'll go ahead and recap the rest of the games that ended up going down in the preseason matchup. So the Pacers ended up beating the Cavs 129 to 117. And obviously, like I said before, the Pacers, they're a very high caliber, high paced offense. It is both good for the team it's also a little bit bad for the team mainly because i just don't like their defense and you know just the uh, attention to detail that they put on defense they pay more attention on offense and they're more focused on offense and i feel like their lack of defense is going to be something that hurts them in the long run and i always think that but again we'll see exactly how well their defense improves or how much worse it gets because we have no idea but I feel rather confident in their offense staying as high-powered as <clears throat> as it always has been, given with Tyrese Halliburton on the team. Now, for the Pacers, the leading scorer was Benedict Mathurin, ended the game with 25 points in 19 minutes, ended up getting three rebounds as well. He shot 8 for 12 from the field, 5 for 8 from 3. Very efficient game coming in from him and then there's obviously Miles Turner, who ended up going 5 for 10 from the field and ended up scoring 12 points as well. Now, other notable player, players, Jarris Walker ended the game 12 points with going 3 for 3 from the field. Um, Aaron Naismith ended up going, or Nesmith, forgive me if I messed up that last name, ended up going 3 for 4 from the field, 2 of 3 from 3 with 10 points. And let's see, TJ McConnell, the defender, the guard that plays defense on the team, 4 for 10, ended up going, getting 8 points. Not a very solid performance, but again, it's like he's mainly there for his defense and things of that nature. And then James Wiseman, who was recently acquired by the Pacers, ended up going 4 for 6 and ended with 8 points as well. And... Really just overall a very solid game coming in from the Pacers. As a team, they ended up shooting 41% from three, ended up taking 39 three-pointers, and um, they also shot 49% from the field. So, you know, very efficient offense coming in from this team. And now for the Cavs, obviously Donovan Mitchell wasn't going to play in this game. It would be, in my opinion, I don't think any starter should be playing any minutes in these preseason games. And Ty Jerome ended up being the leading scorer for the Cavs. However, he only ended with 15 points on 5 for 14 from the field. And let's see, Craig Porter Jr. ended up going 6 for 10 from the field for 14 points as well. Jared Allen ended up going 6 for 8 with 13 points. And let me go ahead and see, George's Niang ended up going 5 for 9 with 12 points. And again, not really much notable performances coming out of the um, of the team. It was more so of a team game that the Cavs ended up playing. The big difference between the two teams was, of course, three-point shooting percentage. Cavs shot 35% from three compared to the Pacers already mentioned 41% from three on top of the fact that the Pacers ended up taking more three-pointers than the Cavs, yet they still shot at a higher percentage than them. That's not winning basketball. That's not going to have you winning a game. And the Cavs, they ended up shooting 50% from the field, which is rather, which is all right, yes. But again, the Pacers, they ended up taking um, more, they ended up getting more possessions, ended up getting more shots, in, especially in the field, like um, around the field, not just the three-point line. And they were still able to keep up with the efficiency that the Cavs were shooting at. 40, they shot 49.5% from the field compared to the Cavs 50.5% from three from field. So literally just a 1% difference. Meanwhile, they were able to get more possessions. So 
that goes that's really the big story of the game the fact that the um pacers they just had more possessions and they were still able to shoot just as efficiently as the Cavs were and like i said before there were no real notable performances coming in from the Cavs, and nobody really outshined anyone it was more of a team game in this uh in this in this loss for the Cavs, so not really much that needs to be talked about here. And then in the next the next team that ended up playing and the next game that happened was the Charlotte Hornets going up against the Grizzlies. The Hornets ended up winning one nineteen to ninety four, and Lamelo Ball ended up playing rather. <laughs> they ended up playing rather well, in my opinion. I mean, um. Lamelo in that actually no Lamelo wasn't in this game. It was actually a previous game where Lamelo Ball was playing, and he made a couple of three pointers. So I made a mistake there. That's my bad. However, for the Hornets, Brandon Miller played really well. He ended up playing 24 minutes in this game, recorded 22 points, as well as being able to shoot eight for 13 from the field and six of eight from three. Terrence Mann also was a not not Terrence Mann. Excuse me. Trey Mann was also a solid option. 8 for 13 from the field, 19 points. And let's see, who else played really well? Um, Salon for for the Hornets as well got got 13 points, 5 for 12 from the field. Um, Bridges, not a big fan of Bridges, but ended up going 3 for 9 from the field and ended up scoring 11 points. And the team, they shot 50% from the field and 41% from 3. And that was the big difference maker, as I've alluded to previously. If you're able to shoot rather efficiently from three, chances are you're going to win the game. And the Grizzlies took 42 three-pointers, but they only ended up making um, 14 of them. Meanwhile, the Hornets shot 43 three-pointers, made 18 of them. So it's no mystery why the Hornets were able to win in this game, as the Grizzlies shot 33% compared to the Hornets' 41%. And from the field, the Grizzlies were also very inefficient, going 30 for 82 and 36%, while the Hornets ended up going 46 for 92 and 50%. And for the Grizzlies, again, there weren't really that many notable players that ended up um, getting a lot of minutes in this game or ended up playing rather well in this game. The only real highlight was uh, Desmond Bain, who ended the game with 17 points, 7 of 13 from the field. Zach Ide played 22 minutes in this game, ended up going having 10 points and 5 rebounds. I expect a lot of things coming from him in this rookie season with John Morant. I think the attention that John Morant draws around the rim is going to open up this 7-footer for a lot of lobs and a lot of um, very explosive plays and a lot of explosive dunks to come out for, um, for the center. And there's also Jay Huff. He ended up going 5 for 10 from the field, 4 of 6 from 3. And Jalen Wells for the Grizzlies as well, 4 for 12 from the field, along with 12 points. And again, just not a very solid performance coming in from the Grizzlies overall. So that's all that I have to say, and that's the only recap that I have. Obviously, the Thunder ended up beating the New Zealand Breakers because, let's face it, the Breakers, they're not going to beat a single NBA team. I'm sorry to say this, but that's just how it is. There are a couple of preseason games that are going on today. Unfortunately, the Orlando Magic game had to be canceled, I believe, due to the hurricane that's going on over there. So hopefully um, the players and hopefully everyone down there in Florida can stay safe. If any of you guys are in there are over in Florida or know any family members in Florida, I hope they're safe and I hope they stay safe because this is a very this is a very um this is an act that is like something that we can't really control. We can never control Mother Nature. And again, I just hope that all of you guys stay safe out there if you are around that area or going to be in an area where that hurricane is going to be in. So that's all that I really have to say about the preseason games that went down. The preseason games that are happening today, Kings are going up against the Warriors. Raptors are going up against the Wizards. 76ers are going up against the Timberwolves. Pistons are playing the Suns. And the Trailblazers are going to play in their first preseason game, and they play against the Clippers. So those are the matchups that are going to happen, and that's all that I have to say about the um, preseason recap. So thank you so much for tuning in. And a little bit of an update for um, the basketball world what that's going on. The WNBA Finals format is going to change to Game 7. 
in this next coming season. And also, the Liberty ended up blowing a huge lead in the first game of the finals. I'm sure none of you guys ended up seeing that because not only was there football going on, but there was also the Yankees playing baseball that was going on. And... You know, obviously, you, I'll, I'll let you guys choose and figure out which um, sport ended up getting the most views. Spoiler alert, wasn't the, MB, wasn't the WNBA because Caitlin Clark isn't playing. So that's all that I really have to say. That's all the updates that I have for you guys in the basketball world. Thank you so much for tuning in to the GSMC Basketball Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. Your support means a lot to us, so remember to subscribe to the show, leave a positive review. It really does make a difference. We also invite you to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram for more content and updates. As usual, we love to hear what you guys have to say during the show, whether you guys have a hot take, burning question, something you've just been dying to share. We're all ears, and if you really want your comment or question to get noticed, I recommend using Super Chat. You just click on the dollar sign below the chat box, and you can send in your comments and or donations that way. If Super Chat isn't really your thing, then that's okay. You can always use the link displayed below the ticker on every show segment, gsmcpodcast.net, and you can send in your comments and or donations that way. That's all that I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am your host, Nelson. Stay safe, have a wonderful weekend, and as always, take care. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Damn, ain't that great. I don't want to go.